Okay, uh, continuing case week again. This is a little bit different though. You remember the big giant tables that we built where I said I was gonna have test bench setups and stuff on there? Um, I needed to find some open air test benches that were smaller and not quite as just God, I don't want to say gaudy, but oversized and just in the way as the like Praxis wet benches have been from Prima Chill. I mean, those are cool open air test benches and you can fit water cooling gear and stuff in there. They just take up way more, way more room than we need them to. So in searching for some open air test benches, I came across a company that I kind of forgot that I had been introduced to at one of the after parties at CES back in like 2018 called Open Bench Table or OBT. I remember them showing me this design that they had come up with and the, the current success that they were having with it where they then came out with like a mini ITX version of it. And I'm not building a mini ITX test bench. It's just this jog my memory of going, wait, I've seen this before. So today we're gonna to take a look at the open bench table test bench. And I ordered two of them because of the fact that, and I ordered this direct from their website, by the way. Uh, I ordered two of them because of the fact that I need to build an Intel system and I need to build an AMD system. So today I'm gonna to be putting my Intel 12900K PC parts that were in our, our big um, Asus case. And we are gonna be putting them in the test bench. And yes, this is two right here. The 7900 XTX Red Devil graphics card from PowerColor features triple 100 millimeter fans with ring fan blades, eight heat pipes with direct contact copper cold plate, dual BIOS, and real-time digital monitoring to guarantee optimum cooling efficiency. The 7900 XTX Red Devil also includes removable magnetic backplate with several optional backplate designs to choose from, allowing users to custom tailor their GPU to match the look and feel of their systems without the need for any tools. To see the full list of features of the PowerColor 7900 XTX Red Devil, follow the link in the description below. So one of the add-ons that I had purchased as well is just the power buttons. Technically, I don't need it because of the fact that just about every uh, motherboard these days does include an, a surface mounted button. However, not all of them do, and it doesn't mean I'm always gonna be using motherboards that, uh, that have buttons on them. So I went ahead and opted to get two of their physical buttons that can be mounted onto their chassis. So these are flat packs because of the fact that these are, I love these things. Every time I see this, Nick, I think about the uh, drone flying with the, I ordered these direct from their website. And the reason why I started to say that, oh, is this like a little carrying bag? That's so cool. I don't plan on traveling with it, but that's neat. You'll be able to put it in here and keep it from getting scratched. Um, moving on. The reason why I'm pointing out that I ordered this direct from their website is it did ship from Asia. Uh, and it didn't mention any of that on their, on their website. But what I want to point out is that it came very quickly. It took about a week and a half. And that's not that bad at all. Yeah, it did come from Hong Kong. So came DHL. Once I got notification that it was on the way, it took about five days, which means they processed the order and shipped it within three to four business days of me making it. So not bad at all in terms of responsiveness of getting the unit shipped. So this is it. That's the case. Yeah, so there's three colors. There's silver, titanium, and black. I went with silver for the simple fact that, and the packaging is nice, holy cow. I went with silver for the simple fact that uh, we're gonna be changing parts and stuff out on it often. So I didn't want to um, scratch up black or titanium with parts moving around on it a lot. So I went with silver just cause it's a clear anodized basically, which means, and they are aluminum, which means it won't get scratched up. So there's a thank you letter right here on the inside. There's also like a QR code that you can scan if you have any questions about how the pieces and stuff work. Oh, I just opened it upside down, but that's okay. So. This is, this is it right here. All the accessories and stuff come pre-mounted to the board. So what this means is if you don't need any of like the radiator standoffs or anything like that, they stay mounted on here. And then when you're ready to, if you need those items, you can just unscrew them, mount them to where they need to go, and then you're good to go. So what I need to do though, is I need to kind of look over the manual to see how this goes together specifically. Cause I know for a fact, like, yeah, no, these are the feet right here. They go on the bottom. There is a power supply mount. These little adapters, right? Where are they? There's little adapters that swing out. Um, I think it's these guys right here, which is where we'll mount the radiator to. It just has two little feet that stick up and you mount to the bottom of the rads for the AIOs or fans. It's pretty neat. All our thumb screws and everything are right here. Everything is attached to itself, which is so neat. And if you look in terms of material, you can see how like just one chunk of aluminum here just gets really efficiently used. It's not like it's wasting a bunch of material. So this is pretty, pretty neat. I'm gonna go ahead and check out the website. I'm gonna take a look at some of the assembly instructions so I can see how everything goes. 
and then we'll come back with it all together. All right, there it is, all put together. This is my Intel 12 non hand <laughs> Again. 12900K rig with my OBT or my open bench table bench table. Uh, it's pretty sick. So obviously we have a 360 radiator. All I had to do is I flip the fans around so the air blows through the rad onto the motherboard and cools the VRMs. Um, the little brackets, which you can't, you can kind of see like right there. Those are those brackets that were mounted to the board, obviously. We still have spare screws and stuff right here. Um, we have the hold down for the graphics card. But what's funny is that um, this motherboard is not actually screwed down. So if you look carefully, you can see right there, there's just like a nubbin sticking up through. And one of the things that this open bench table allows is for the choice of either screwing down your motherboard or using those little, like, little pins to, to replace the standoffs or just different standoffs. So the motherboard like pops down in there. So I opted to use that because I was like, how, how tough is this to get off once they're all popped down? Remember there's three, six, nine mounting holes. Uh, it stays like I even had the thing on its side when I was doing the cable management on the bottom not really management but just sort of less getting everything organized in a way to where I could access SATA cables and stuff if I need to um, it didn't fall off at all so in fact you can even kind of like you can see this side's held down by the GPU but you can kind of tell like it, it does not like it's solid right so it's not going anywhere um, there's enough gap between the motherboard and the surface here where you can run cables under it. So underneath that, if you can kind of see, I've got some cables under there. Most of that is just the fan cables and the uh, USB 2.0 header stuff for the AIO that I have running on here. I'm not a fan of running this AIO. Ha <laughs> ha, get it? Uh, but it's all I have for now. I think I might switch out both my AMD rig, which I have to build, and my Intel rig with matching coolers. That way we have parity between the two test benches, because if we are testing things like how cool is this run versus this, if we need as A, B as possible. Um, so I don't want to, and I don't want control boxes and stuff. I just like the simple plugs in, uses motherboard headers for the fan control, pump control, and that's it. That's all I want. But I also have a um, one daisy chain and one direct PCI Express cable on here. Um, I don't have three directs, but it's not gonna be a problem because here's the thing. The graphics cards that would be using that much power are now using 12 volt high power cables. So because I'm using the Corsair 1500i, this uh, cable's plugged in as well. So I have 40 series covered, as well as anything still using PCI, the standard PCI Express cables. I also have, because this 1500i is a smart power supply, you can see right here, there's actually a USB-C plug plugged in. This will give me actual, um, accurate enough software voltage and wattage readouts of things that are being drawn through the cable. So I'll be able to calculate GPU load, CPU load, all that sort of stuff. And then of course the test bench itself is gonna have uh, a watt stopper or a, a watt meter built into the power strip that this is plugged into, or at least the plug going through this will go to that so I can see what is the total system draw of the system itself when we're testing certain things. But it took me a little bit to get this together and sort of figure it out and how I wanna do it. Oh, also too, the actual controller, these two screws right here, that's the controller uh, mounted underneath. So it's, it's under there. You can kind of see it if I tilt it up, you can see the three white RGB pin ports there if I were to add other RGB stuff to it. Um, but what I love about this is that everything just stores to the bench itself. So like this is one of the extra rods right there. If we needed it for other PCI Express stuff, it just uses these same standoffs right here. So these are the same standoffs like you would use for the motherboard thread down standoffs. They go in there, the rod goes in there. I only need two of them because GPU is pretty much the only thing we'll ever be mounting there. But then this just kind of stores down here on the leg, as you can see, so I don't lose it. And then when I'm not using this guy, it just slides up through there. And then I lock it, the screws down right here. There you go, everything is stored. So everything is now mounted to it, even the parts I'm not using, so nothing gets lost. Now that I've spent some time with this and I know how it all works, I'm gonna show you guys in real time, without any cuts, how quick and easy this thing is to set up. I feel like this is now where I have to defend my positivity when people are gonna go, oh, he did the steal, he was just paid to do, no, I, I paid for these, 200 and some odd dollars a piece, like 500 bucks for these. I didn't use the power button. I didn't mount them down yet. They'll actually go right here. There's one on the left, one on the right. That's where they'll go. Not using it at the moment. This does have surface, surface mounted screws. Anyway, moving on. Allow me to just use the cardboard here so I don't go scratching everything up. 
So first thing we need to do is get the feet out of there, which is this one and this one. So you just loosen the screw, they're just thumb screws. So there's foot number one. You can see there is rubber on the bottom, so it won't be scratching up your tables and stuff. So and there are also some anti-slide. Same thing over here. Loosen, loosen. And before I mount down the feet, these are the nubs I was telling you about. So that's a standard uh, standoff right there for the motherboard, for the screw. This is the one that just uses the nub. So I'm gonna be using the ones with the nubs. Also, um, a lot of these screws might have loosened up a little bit in transit because of the vibrations of it being in trucks and planes and all that sort of stuff. So if you hear some rattling and stuff on there, you just gotta go through and kind of retighten all these things up. So I'm gonna get these off. Same ones for over here. I just think it's easier to do it this way than when it's already put together because that's how I had to do it the first time once it was together. The quality of the hardware too, the steel, it's just, this is all custom made stuff for this. It's not like they sourced it from some screw manufacturer. They're like, oh, here's a thing we use. And then they chose from it and made it work. That's not how this was. It's pretty awesome. Okay, so these will just go in. I'm lost. Oh yeah, that's right. Have to unscrew these screws here because these do pass through. The amount of engineering and thought process that went into the design of the open bench table is just, it kind of blows my mind. And like I said, they have a mini ITX version of it as well. So we've got that can pass you like that. That will go right there. There's one. There is two. And I'm just gonna snug them up. Not tight, tight. They are aluminum. You can strip them pretty easy. So don't go overboard with tightening it up. Here's the reverse. These are uh, not specific to left or right. They can go either way. Just that. Snug up, snug up. Motherboard standoffs. There's one. Nick, grab me another ATX motherboard, any motherboard. It's just a standard motherboard. That one. There. So here is the motherboard here, so I can now show you. <laughs> so. There you go. So that's just a standard ATX motherboard. Lines up with all the holes. Push it down. So that's why I chose to use those and not the screws because it. I can't tell you how many times I would have had to unscrew it when I was mounting all that stuff down. Anyway, moving on. Um, these brackets right here. These are the little guys that I showed you that will mount to the corner of the radiator. So you can kind of see one right there. So that's just using one fan screw. You can put it down here in the bottom if you wanted. I chose obviously to put it up here near the top. The thing is, it's kind of a tight fit though if you go up here between the top of the motherboard and the fans. So make sure your wires and stuff are not um, interfering. I chose to also pre-run my um, EPS power that way. And it's running down through, actually under the board through here and then across the top of the power supply into the power supply. So there's one there. But because the standoffs are so tall, as you can see, there's plenty of room to run stuff underneath the motherboard and you're not gonna be interfering with anything. Okay, so that's kind of how you're, it, now a 240 AIO, this lines up pretty good. The 360, as you can see, it's offset. It's offset because of the fact that there's only three fans and it has to mount to two of them. And you can't mount to the two center ones because there's not enough room, even if you were to like turn these in really tight like even if you were to turn them in like that it's still too wide to fit on two of the fans to the two inner screws to center it so i just chose to let it be offset that's fine you do get another set here and here so if you were testing or just mounting an aio on a gpu you could have an aio right up here for the cpu and one down here for the gpu so those can mount down there i just left mine here because i'm not using them that way these right here are your 
Tsai Express standoff rods as I already showed. There's one. There's two. Now these do share the same standoff bits here as the uh, motherboard would. Some motherboards, as you know, they put a M.2 right here now and then they start one slot down for the top 16X slot. So depending on your motherboard, let's see here. Yeah, so this motherboard here, for instance, if I were using this for my AMD rig, which I'm not. In fact, I need three of these now. Shoot, now that I think about it, because I feel like I need an AM4 one as well. But anyways, as you can see, this one here would be too high. So, so there's that. And then these thread into that. That's also why they give you this flat packability with everything mounting to itself. And then that, that travel bag, if you needed to pack this and travel with it, I guess, I'm not sure. Like if you go in a backpack, not sure who would need that, honestly, but you can. And then the one thing we haven't talked about yet is the power supply. Now check out the power supply right here. You can see it mounts to the leg and it only mounts with two screws, one there and one in the corner. And an ATX power supply would technically mount sideways which is, or not ATX, sorry, um, SFX power supply, technically mount sideways, which I think is kind of weird. But if you look at the screw caps that are stuck in the side, there's a 630 seconds and an M3. So these are the long M3s. These are what will thread down um, for like the two and a half inch SSD. So like these two slots right here, which is also where these rods um, store, you would have to take those out to be able to mount your SSD, but they can hang right there like that. Or you can do like I did, which you can't see too well, is instead of hanging it, because remember there's screws on the side, there's also four on the bottom, like on the flat part, like if you're mounting it to a tray, I mounted it flat with only two of those holding my control board in there. So it's flat like this, that way it wasn't in the way of anything. So I chose to do it that way, but these long screws, these M3s are what will go through there. And you can see just how much of those threads are sticking through that's what will mount into your SSDs or your controller. Like I said, I mounted my controller there where the SSD would go. So you could hang two of them or hang one flat if you wanted. Um, but the power supply, because they use a 630 seconds and not the M3, and the motherboard standoffs also use the M3 or the 630 seconds, that's the, these screw caps over here. So you can see they're shorter. They're more, well, they may not be shorter, but they're definitely a more coarse thread. And these are what go through here to mount into your power supply. Now they're slotted, elongated. And the reason for that, and what I did was I just put it down on the table. I slid my power supply in there, fan side up, by the way. If the fan was down, it would be against the table. That's not good. Fan side up. That way, when these are mounted down, it's not hanging on, the power supply is not hanging on the leg. It's just on the table. So, and then once, they lined up, they were just resting there. I threaded them in and then we were good. And you get what you have here. How strong is it? There is no issue with the power supply hanging from it at all. Like it does not bow or bend or anything. So don't worry about being, oh man, it's gonna bow or bend that leg. No, it's not. It's gonna be just fine. And then like I said, once you put it down, the power supply is just resting on the table anyway. So there you go with the exception of the fact that I, you know, we need to mount the power supply and stuff into this. That is how quick and easy it is to set up one of these open bench table test benches here. They're not cheap. I've always seen pictures of these and I always wanted to do the, like this, this type of test bench. Now I have a working test bench build for Intel. Now we're gonna have to finish mine for AMD. It's gonna be an AM5 build. Like I said, I still have to do a little thing like get matching coolers, get this off there. I did not go air cooler for one major reason. To go with an air cooler with modern CPUs like the 13900K and the 7950X, et cetera, are huge. And by huge, they overhang on the RAM and it makes switching out RAM and stuff very annoying. And when I'm doing test bench stuff and I'm checking how RAM speed affects stuff and I'm trying different RAM kits and stuff, I don't want to unclick a fan to take the fan off and hope there's still clearance and all that and put the fan back on the side of the cooler. AIO is the way to go for test bench purposes, especially since I have to overclock the 12900K to try and make up some of the different deficit between a 13900K. That way I'm not holding back any modern GPUs and GPU testing by having a 12900, although this will probably have to change sometime in the near future anyway. So there you go, guys. I'll put a link to their website down below. Like I said, they did not sponsor this. I paid 100% retail. They had even offered to send me stuff back in the day. I just, I had no need for it back then, so I didn't really respond. But uh, here we go. I'm happy that I did. I forgot I ordered them because when they came in, I was like, what is this box? And I opened it and I was like, oh, sweet. And I knew I wanted to do this video. All right, guys, 
Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.